Hello, Kirsten. It's so awesome that you're here. I am so excited to chat today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you guys do not know, I mean, you should by now, because I've talked about it at length, uh, the very best cookie in the whole wide world, you are looking and listening right now to its creator and founder and cookie baker extraordinaire. I, before this call, we can get into this later, but I have ranked all of my favorite cookies of yours that I've tried over the years because they're all incredible. It was very hard. It took about 35 minutes because I was deciding and I was like, wait, what about ooh, this one? Um, but uh, she has the, the most talented and I'm, I've got very high cookie standards and baking standards. The most talented baker extraordinaire that I have tasted in years. Uh, and so, I, Kirsten, I would love for you to tell everybody a bit about who you are, more about what you do, and we can kind of get into how you got here. Thank you. So like many others, I had a pandemic pivot. I, at the start of the pandemic, was furloughed from my job. I was working uh, as a server at Rose Cafe in Venice and also trying to fundraise for a co-working space. I don't know if you know this part, actually. No. I was trying to build a female-focused co-working space that was going to have child care, fitness studios, <sighs> uh, beauty services, and a cafe. So I was trying to raise $10 million for that nice. project and working nights at the restaurant. Yeah. And of course, everything completely fell apart once the pandemic hit. And I just couldn't even like begin to focus on trying to raise money for a project when who knows that like if that was going to come to fruition. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, well, once I was furloughed from my job, I was like, I don't care what happens. I cannot go back to serving. I had been there for four and a half years and it is extremely for anybody that's waited tables before worked in a restaurant you know how it is it's uh I learned the most about myself I think working those four years at the restaurant for sure but mm -hmm. it was very long nights and long hours and hard work and I just was over it so at the start of the pandemic to quell my anxiety I started baking chocolate chip cookies for all of my friends and family and ding dong ditching them and leaving them on their doorstep it's just like something fun and delicious to do. And after about a month of that, people were like, you really should just sell these cookies. Mm -hmm. And I had built a website before for my previous company, which was a clothing company. So I had a little bit of experience building websites. So I was just like, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm literally sitting around doing nothing if I'm not baking. So might mm -hmm. as well try it and see if it works. And it just grew completely organically through word of mouth. And that was almost two and a half years ago. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Did you have a baking or like cooking background before? No, not at all. I just, I just love feeding people. I'm actually a better cook than I am a baker. I always joke that I don't even like baking. I just like eating sweets. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Like, I mean... What you make is incredible. Like no formal training for this? No. Uh -uh. Just like tweaking recipes. Growing up, my mom was a professional scrapbooker and would host these like scrapbooking retreats at our house yeah. with all of her, you know, customers. And so I started baking for them at a very early age. Like by sixth, seventh grade, I was like making banana cream pies and brownies and Texas sheet cake and chocolate chip cookies and all sorts of things for them. And I just like always loved feeding people. I actually thought I wanted to go into the culinary world and I yeah. graduated UCLA and was going to go to culinary school after I graduated UCLA. But then I was nannying for a family mm -hmm. waiting for my program to start and I was doing all of their cooking and I was like, oh no, this is not the life for me. I do not like this. I like entertaining and I like feeding people, but like cooking professionally is yeah. not my cup of tea. So no, I, you switched. I ended up, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's so funny when you were talking, like two shows came to mind. One, The Bear, which uh -huh. everybody <laughs> finished that. Yep. And then one, I feel highly underrated, but the server perspective. Oh my gosh. Sweet Bitter. Oh no, I don't know that one. 
Oh my What's gosh. What's the one with the catering? They were catering. It's kind of older. Oh. Uh, with the guy from Severance. Yes. Yeah. Something party? No. I, I, I know. I know. One. I know. I'm terrible at this. I, I'm a visual <laughs> person, so I can picture the logo or like the, you know, the. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's so funny. Those those stick in your mind of like, oh no no, I am not doing this. I cannot do this for the long term. And I I also have friends who have been chefs in restaurants and then personal chefs, and it's just like it's a whole different ball game of like, yeah. you know, families really restricting even what the chef wears in their home or, you know, how they mm-hmm. look at people or, or how they treat people. And it's, it's just a whole different thing. It's like, you know, you're doing the smart thing. You're using your natural gift and then dropping it off. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have you. that interaction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I guess another thing too, the, 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 the website that you built, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the branding, the, the packaging, it's all so beautiful. Like how, how did you yeah. also, did, is this all you and your brain? I made my logo on my phone with an app called PicMonkey. <laughs> we literally, like when I decided that this was going to be a thing, we were all sitting on the couch. It was my mom's birthday yeah October or April uh, 10th 2020 and we're all sitting around and I'm like this really is the very best cookie in the whole wide world and my sister goes is that what you should call it and we I was like well the domain is obviously available because it's mm-hmm. a million words long yeah I forget where I was going with that oh yeah so I just like mocked up a logo on my phone and pick monkey <laughs> and that stuck and luckily one of my good friends is a graphic designer so she's helped me do all the stickers mm-hmm. and all that uh, packaging design but yeah it's really just it, it's fun it's so much easier to market a product like I don't consider myself like I don't consider that I do any marketing because mm-hmm. I'm just sharing something that I love with people that I like you know yeah so it doesn't feel like I'm being salesy or marketing at all it's mm-hmm. all come quite naturally but yeah so it's all been organic I guess you could say yeah no no it, it's just it's amazing to see because I think I think I got your cookies in the very beginning um uh-huh. pretty early on because I'm a loyal fan <laughs> but, but it just like I, everything that comes out I'm like you're like you're saying too like it does feel organic like uh-huh. folks you've partnered with charities that you've supported along the way you know nothing feels like oh this is interesting like it just feels like oh yeah this new flavor, this makes sense. And then you're going to support this. And it just, it, it, it makes you feel good in so many, so many different ways to support your business. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I have pretty simple taste. I mean, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. It's a chocolate chip cookie, mm-hmm. but I think the quality of the ingredients, I use really good butter and really good chocolate. And mm-hmm. it just allows fewer, simpler ingredients just allows the quality of the ingredient to shine through. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I get asked this a lot and people are like, you're a health and wellness coach. You eat a lot of sweets. You know, my dog growing up, her name was Candy because (laughs) we just, well, as a family, like, you know, you got a sweet tooth or as I like to say, like, you know, like cows have five stomachs, like humans also have a separate compartment, like a separate side for for sweets. Like it exists. Absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I don't need like handbags or shoes. I, 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 I exit that money to go to my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but but it's just like you have to enjoy life. You, you have mm-hmm. to like you have to take that bite. You got to eat the cookie. Like you, I don't believe in like um, deprivation at all, or like just. Mm-hmm cutting something cold turkey and never having it again, you know, like that just doesn't work. That's not like living a happy and whole life. So to me, it's like, of course I'm going to have the cookies and the cookies made with like the best ingredients mm-hmm. because that's worth it then, you know, if you're going to grab something off the grocery store shelf that's been sitting there and like made to, made to sit there for a long time, like exactly not exactly worth it, but something like, 
made with the love, made with the care, made with the right things. Like, absolutely. Like I am not taking any of that out of my, my day-to-day routine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny. Cause people always ask if I would do like paleo or whatever health diet, like fat is in the moment cookies mm-hmm. or treats. And I'm like, no, that's not really what I'm about. You know, I have gluten-free and I have vegan yeah, and those are more about like dietary restrictions rather than fad diets. But I just want to produce wholesome, delicious treats. And like, if you're not eating sugar, then, you know, find somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, but like the, also the gluten-free ones don't taste gluten-free and no. yeah. And I don't, I, really I don't yeah, I don't know how, you, what your secret sauce is there. Cause I've tried to make my, my husband goes on like weird kicks all the time. And he's like, I'll have red red red. yeah. And I, or like the cup for cup. And I'm like, and I've really tried and, and like the brownies turn as hard as a rock. The cookies are just barely edible. Like, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not about bad at baking, but it's just not, um, not so great, but you've managed to, to, to make them taste just as good as the, the OG. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So you have now, now you're here, what we're almost 2023. So almost three years in this business mm-hmm. bananas, a, eh? yeah. <laughs> but B, you know, you know, you are, you're, are are doing this and you you've got a team and you've got your family and and friends supporting but like how do you even take time to do anything for yourself or like take care of yourself like is this even on the table right now oh my gosh uh my first year i worked literally around the clock i was doing everything out of my parents house and i didn't have any employees at the time so i was getting up at like five o'clock in the morning to start making rice crispy treats for the day yeah. And so I could get all of my baking done early and let everything cool before I had to package and ship everything. Mm-hmm. And I worked like almost every day of 2020. Yeah. 2020 was rough, but I loved what I was doing and I was feeding so many people and it was, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. But then in 2021, when I hired, it was awesome to be able to outsource. And I have ADHD and I suffer from depression. So I got, I was getting, it's really hard when the business goes through different cycles to not take things personally. And I was just getting really depressed, especially like seeing other companies that had come up in the pandemic and like watching them soar and feeling stuck. And like, it's so hard not to compare yourself to other people and other businesses and to realize like every, like every journey is different. And so, but whatever, that is separate, but I have Awesome. So how do you find that time for yourself? Uh, I think you just have to make it happen. Like I was losing my mind working all the hours and all the days in 2020 and hiring somebody was the best thing I could have ever done. I wish I would have hired somebody earlier so that I had more time to focus on the business instead of trying to do the business and the social media and the marketing and the emails and, you know, everything and baking and shipping. So hiring definitely allowed me to free up some time for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just, I, I love to read, yeah. reading a, getting lost in a good book. So I think that when I allow myself to read and just can get lost, that that, you know, rejuvenates me tremendously. Yeah. What's on your nightstand now? Uh, right now I'm reading The It Girl Ooh. and another book which I can't even remember the title of about Hemingway's first wife Ooh. French girl or something like that I I think I have I have a the one oh I have a good one you're gonna like it um it's about uh it's similar to that but it's about Frank Lloyd Wright and uh his first wife and Ooh. inside that yeah it's a little juicy yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, do you read cookbooks? Oh my gosh. I have so many cookbooks. I had to stop myself this year. I was going wild. Yes. I love cookbooks. I love all the beautiful pictures and fun recipes. I, 
with cooking, I actually don't like following recipes per se. I'll use it more as inspiration, but unless yeah. it's a cuisine I'm not familiar with. But yes, I love cookbooks. That's that that's the dangerous thing by my bedside table. And then I get excited yeah, mm-hmm. and cannot sleep because I'm mm-hmm. like, ooh, I'd like to make this or this, or like, how do I find this ingredient? Like there's there's a recipe I keep reading or a cookbook I keep reading and then they keep using uh like date syrup and like pomegranate syrup and uh-huh. I and I don't know where to find pomegranate syrup. So I'm on, always on a mission. I'm like, I will make this recipe someday. You gotta go to Surface. Have you been to Surface? Oh, in Culver City, right? Yeah. It's great. Oh. They'll have it for sure. Okay. okay. It's been ages. Ages. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be dangerous to go there too. Yeah. <laughs> too much good stuff. They can just take all my money. Right? Right. The cheese selection, everything. Yep. Perfect. Cool. Well, it's, I know that being an entrepreneur is one of like the hardest jobs because when you take that break, it's probably a feeling of like, I shouldn't be doing this or Mm -hmm. uh, the guilty feeling about that too. Mm -hmm. And especially because your job is so tied to other people and, and feeding Mm -hmm. others. And like the feeling that you get from that is like Mm -hmm. your why and keeps you going. Like, it's good that you have found some like outlets to, to slow down. But like, I, I can't imagine like in 2020, there was no way to do that. But the the past two years, have you found more time? Like, have you gotten Uh, days off and like actually shut down? Yeah. It's funny. Well, it's hard to totally shut down because my brain is just always going. Yeah. I went, my boyfriend, parents have a house in Montana and we went in January and I was supposed to not work at all and of course I was like oh I'm gonna try all this recipe dev and like just got sucked into everything and I worked literally the entire time back again this summer and I actually like shut the business down for a week so Mm -hmm. then I was able to just like disconnect and it was wonderful I I read four books in 10 days (laughs) and went on hikes and cooked all the food and it was great so that was my first like real vacation since yeah this started gosh and you met your boyfriend through cookies right yes he was a customer first (laughs) he ordered uh july of 2020 and back then i only had the og chocolate chip and then i added pecans to that and i made the pecan chocolate chip and he ordered that and the cookie dough so literally everything on my website he ordered and in the comments he wrote I love you and I was like are you talking to me like are you talking to cookie who's this for and back then I was seeing every single order that came through and then he tagged me on Instagram when he baked his cookie dough and we just became buddies on Instagram Mm -hmm. and then the rest is history (laughs) I love that love story love pretty sweet And we're ready to sell it to Hallmark. Yeah, right. <laughs> also jealous because he gets to taste what doesn't make it oh, to, yeah. the, to the, the cutting room floor or what falls oh, on the yeah. cutting room floor. <clears throat> Absolutely. He's a great taste tester. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, well, so now, now that like <laughs> you, you have now everything is sort of moved into a new space and you're baking smaller batches. Like what is your day-to-day life or like, I guess week to week life look like, because I can imagine you're not running into shipping stuff every day all the time. Maybe you have more like process or streamlined, mm-hmm. but like what, it, what does it look like for you? Yeah. So Mondays, but since we, well, we, we ship Monday through Wednesday. We ship everything two days, so we can't ship on Thursdays because it wouldn't arrive before the weekend. Yeah. So Mondays, we do a lot of prep work, and then we bake and ship everything Monday through Wednesday. Thursday, we do local deliveries, and then Fridays, doing recipe dev and some back office admin kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I've had to get much more structured because we used to like ship and deliver all over the place and yeah. all the time, and it was too much and I think people having less choices like they're not bothered by having less choices it's just like you take what you can get totally but um but I would like to make a request that 
the the bars you had for the holiday season. Oh yes. Bring those back sometime because those I still dream about them. Which ones did you love? Uh, I ordered one. I had the cookies and cream brookie thing, and I had the peanut butter oh. fluff one for Halloween, and I had a brown butter toffee. Brown butter toffee. Yes. Okay. I'm working on a new version of that, actually, uh, today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we also got the cinnamon, we got the thick mint and the, the cookies. Oh, and yeah. Cream. And I ate them Thick all. Thick Man is coming back. Like people request that all year long. Oh, I kept it in my freezer and I waited till I had a good work moment to like finish the last three cookies myself. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do a mint brownie too that I'm excited about. Oh my gosh. I'm a total mint dessert person. So I love that. Yeah. Me too. I love mint. Love. Okay. Since we're talking about flavors, I just have to mm-hmm. tell you also <laughs> my rankings here. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to admit this and it's okay to shame me. I don't <laughs> love chocolate chip cookies. I love oh your my gosh. I no know. way. No, just, I'm either like an all chocolate, like a brownie or uh-huh. a no chocolate. Uh-huh. So, uh, I just will say that, but your chocolate chip cookies are amazing and everybody else is like so jazzed. But I, if I had to pick a chocolate, it would be the the fudgiest brownie. Yes. Those are so good. That was actually the first recipe I ever developed when I was living with my aunt and uncle the summer in between my junior and er, and senior year in college. I was experimenting with those brownies and it, it was like, started from some recipe off Epicurious. I can't even remember mm-hmm. what the recipe was and just like modifying it and playing with it. So changing the proportions. Yeah. Yeah. So back when I was 20 years old, a little, Gosh. right. <laughs> it is so good with coffee. I like, Oh yeah. I like preserve it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you slice it up. It's so, so delicious. I actually haven't shared it with any of my kids because <laughs> They don't need it too much, and I don't want them to steal it. Yeah, but also the Cinnas World, and oh my god, I, I have some of those right now <sighs> in the freezer. I did a special batch for somebody last week. Out of this world, out of this yeah, world. That's one yeah. of my favorites too. And for I'm playing any- with that as a bar, also really, mm-hmm. oh, that'd be delicious for anyone who hasn't tried it or. You hasn't had your cinny buns, which are cinnamon rolls. My neighbor comes and steals them, and his wife doesn't really let him eat a lot of sweets. So when I <laughs> add them, he's been like, ah, "Just gonna get, grab a cup of coffee over there." But the the there's something like really magical about this in this world. It's like I don't want to say doughy because that's the wrong word, but it's like that inside part of a of a mm-hmm. cinnamon roll transform into a cookie. And so you're getting the best parts and the best bites. Like I, I it's something, something out of this world and special. They're so good. I love them. That's really one of my favorites. And that happened totally on accident. I was making cinnamon rolls and had extra filling left over. And I was like, I wonder if I just like put this inside of a cookie and tried to like roll it up if that would work. And I tried it and I was like, oh my, that's the only cookie I've ever made, by the way, that was like perfect the first time. Everything else is like 10 times. I'm trying to like, make things to get it right. That's what I was going to ask too, of like, you know, I, I think that a lot of us think like, oh, you know, they've got a recipe, they work from the recipe and this is, you know, put out into the world. Like so many things. It's like, everyone's like, Oh, they, this person has popped, but they've really worked for ten years to to pop. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's it's like how 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 do you come up with a recipe, and then like how do you taste test it and make sure it's like right in in every kitchen you're going to bake it? That is actually very tricky because every oven is so different. So we just have to play around with the oven and cook times and temperatures to get it to turn out pretty consistently flavors I I feel like I, I'm always going back to a lot of like nostalgic things I've loved from childhood so Cinnabon was one of my favorites I've done Hostess cupcakes mm. like lemon 
cakes I love. You know, it's funny. I'm very lowbrow with some things. My very favorite cake in the whole world is the icebox lemon cake from Costco. <laughs> if you haven't had that, like it's like 20 pounds and I could probably eat the top half of that thing in like two sittings. <laughs> It's so good. So I've been trying to like come up with a cookie form of that. It hasn't worked out yet. Yeah. And then, yeah, a lot of things, just like seeing things on the internet, like getting inspired by something. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll come up with the name of a cookie. The yeah. Um, yeah. Pucker Up, the strawberry one I did. I started for Valentine's Day last year. I came up with the name first and I was like, okay, like what can I do to make a cute red cookie for Valentine's Day? Mm -hmm. And I tried red velvet and I was like, oh, this is so boring. Like let's try strawberry instead. And then it has actually been one of my best selling cookies. So yeah, a lot of random. Yeah. And then like, when you, when you decided on like, here's going to be the flavor for pucker up, like how many batches did it take to get to that? Like just right flavor. Uh, that one, it probably took a few tries. I got lucky with that one, but some of them, seriously, I try like 10 times and then I can't even get it right or can't get it to be consistent and we'll just yeah. drop it. Last year I was trying to do an apple cookie for Thanksgiving and we just couldn't get it right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board with that one because I just love apple, apple mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, it's also tricky because up until now, I haven't had retail space. So yeah. it's, and 75% of my orders are shipped. So I have to figure out what is going to ship well. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I open up retail space in the fall, I'll be able to really do whatever I want and not have to lean on shipping my cookies as much, which I'm really excited for. That's awesome. So can I can you... have things like cinnamon buns on the menu all the time and do like different flavors of those and awesome. Can you... with more fresh ingredients. Can you share anything about the retail store? Or is that still under wraps? The fall? Yeah, I got really, really lucky. My sister's friend saw a bakery on um, Instagram that was letting go of a space that they had taken a lease on and started building out and never finished, and they were just over it. So it's going. It's in Virgil Village, right across the street from Squirrel. So I, I'm just waiting on the construction bid. And as long as it's within yeah. what he expected it to be, I'll be taking over that lease and hopefully get it built out in like six to eight weeks. So I'm just waiting on a construction bid. But oh my like, gosh. I already bought an oven and have it delivered there. So it's like, <laughs> it needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sending good vibes to you. Thank you. I can't only imagine, I, I love Squirrel. They catered my, um, my first son's, uh, our, our baby shower. And oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, love them. And then you have Squirrel and then you have Courage on the same street. Yeah. So it's like the yeah. runoff of both of those. Yeah, absolutely. That's Who doesn't want a bagel or a brownie for like yeah. Sunday breakfast? Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's awesome. Like yeah. super incredible. I'm really pumped. And that's not that's not too far of a drive for me. So yeah. <laughs> personally, that's also a win. <laughs> yeah, I just got really lucky because I never thought that I'd be able to afford retail space because retail is so much yeah. more expensive than commercial. Yeah. But just because they locked in the lease four mm -hmm. years ago and it's at a really good rate that it's doable. Yeah. And then it's, is it a ton of construction or just kind of like customizing to what no, you need? They've are, it's like almost finished being built out. I need to get a hood installed and have the walk-in fridge and freezer completed. And then the rest of it is cosmetic, like finishing up the paint and tile and that kind of stuff, which is really fun to be able to design. And I already have a gal that yeah. wants to be my coffee partner and wants to like take over all of that. So I won't even have to do coffee and beverage. Yeah. So. I think it's gonna be great. And I really want it to operate like a co-op. So like bringing in other bakers and other makers yeah. to share the space with. I know how hard it is to find space, especially on a small scale. So to be able to open up the space and bring all of our customers together, I think will be mutually beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Well, it sounds like also like you've gone full circle too. Like you started so many years ago with a dream to have this like co-working space and bring people together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you're still doing that with your life. It's just in a different format. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. It's funny. People always ask if I'll go back to the co-working space because I spent two years working on that business plan and getting all like just it was a lot of work because it was so many different business components. 
yeah. crystals that I wasn't familiar with. Um, but for me at that point that served a need for me and I wanted it to exist as a space that I could use. And like, now that I don't need that anymore, I'm not as passionate about it. Whereas I have transferred that passion into, yeah, exactly. Like a co-op kitchen or a mm-hmm. co-working kitchen. And th- that really doesn't exist. It's kind of crazy mm-hmm. that it's so difficult for small people to find kitchen space. Right. 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 Yeah. And then just, you know, supporting other talent out there and lifting them up and, you know, they can sort of ride the coattails of what you're doing. Um, that's just, that's great for community and that's great for sharing the love. Absolutely. And I love sharing. Like, I feel like I've learned so much. It's silly for people to have to refigure things out. Like anything I know, any vendors, like I'm happy to share all that stuff. Yeah. And then that, that's amazing too, because it's like you, oftentimes you're only like 10% ahead of somebody who's, you know, trying to follow the, not exactly your footsteps, but you know, something, a similar path. And it's like, why not? Like, I don't want to be a gatekeeper yeah. for anything. Like here's mm-hmm. this phone number. Here's what I did wrong. Um, mm-hmm. or here's what's going to save you time. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that, you know, we're, we're all on this planet to kind of help each other out. And if we don't recognize yeah. that, you know, yeah, we- and there's enough business for everybody. Like yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not threatened by that at all. No, sharing. no, not at all. Not at all. Awesome. Well, I now have like a hundred things that I need to place orders for. So I, it's just a good reminder to always check in with you every couple of months, every couple of weeks. Um, but I have one last question for you and it's a question I ask everyone. Yeah. And quite honestly, my college roommate and I started this like, oh my gosh, close to 20 years ago. And it was like every night, we'd ask each other this question before bed and it'd be like, if you had a button to do something for you right now, what would it do? And that was college. So most of the time it was like, bring me a Gatorade or (laughs) 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 8 Um, a.m. But, but now it's, it's so interesting. I think about that question often. I'm like, you know, if I, I'm going to have this like giant thing on my phone, I'm like, this would actually like a button and I could press it. What would it do? Yes. If you had that button, what would it do in your life or in your day to day? Oh my gosh. Clean up after me. I'm <laughs> very ADHD. So I like will open a cabinet and already be on to the next thing. And mm-hmm. obviously the kitchen gets very messy with all of the dishes and I can't, start like my surface has to be totally clean before I can start something else otherwise I just get too distracted Mm -hmm. but I also just like put things in obscure places like I have a chain on my phone because I lose my phone every single time I put it down so I'm usually wearing it so I don't lose it I'll like put it on a shelf in the refrigerator and be like where where did it go (laughs) so keeping me organized and cleaning up after me would be the button save me so much time I would like that button too, because I'm also a misplacer of things. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it was an absolute pleasure um, having you on today and chatting and hearing your story. I love what you're doing and I'm so excited. Congrats on the retail space. I cannot wait to shout about it to everybody I know. You'll obviously be invited to the grand opening. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, dear. Have a great weekend. You're welcome. Thank you too. Bye. Bye.